In this video, we will talk about Volatility Smile and Volatility Skew. This video will be helpful for candidates who are preparing for the FRM Part 2 exam. Let's start by quickly recapping this concept of implied volatility. What we have here is the very simple, the very popular Black-Scholes model specifically for the case, let's say, where we are trying to value a European call. This model we know takes in six inputs and please note this that five out of these six inputs can either be number one directly observed in the market, number two are attributes of the option itself, number three can be implied from prices of other market traded securities or number four can be reliably forecasted based on historical values. Okay, It's only this input which is the implied volatility input which is not really observable. Because this input is not observable, it kind of gives us this flexibility that just in case the model price does not match the market price for our chosen option, this input can be bumped up or down and let's say set to be a value such that the model price comes out to be equal to the market price. Okay, this brings us to this definition of implied volatility. Implied volatility is that number, that volatility input, which makes the model price of a given option equal to its market price. Very quickly, let me list out for you four aspects regarding implied volatility that you can keep in mind. The first aspect is that in contrast to realized slash historical volatility, implied volatility is a measure of future uncertainty of your underlying asset. Okay, It has this forward-looking connotation attached to it. Number two, implied volatility is a model-dependent number. If instead of the Black-Scholes model, you were using some other model to imply out this volatility number, that implied volatility might potentially come out to be different. Number three, and something which is important as far as this video is concerned, is that implied volatility really does depend on the option from which it has been implied from. That means if you were to repeat this exercise again and again for different options which differ in terms of their strike, and or their time to expiry, every time the implied volatility might turn out to be different. Okay, now remember this, that if we are talking about a very idealized and frictionless type of market where there are no transaction costs, no bid-ask spreads, etc., in that situation, the type of the option which you use to imply your implied volatility, I mean call versus put option, does not really matter. So I'm saying that the implied volatility coming from a call and the implied volatility coming from a put will be equal if both of these options are European options of the same strike and time to expiry. This is because of put call parity. Okay. Now, as far as this aspect is concerned, the takeaway here is that sigma implied has this dependence on strike and time to expiry. And we are now in a position to define what we mean by volatility smile. Think of volatility smile to be this dependence of implied volatility on strike for a given or chosen time to expiry. Okay. The fourth aspect for you to keep in mind is that volatility smile, this dependence of sigma implied on K, gives us this information which can help us reassess the probabilities of huge up and down moves in our underlying asset. Okay, I'm talking about extreme moves here. This aspect we will revisit towards the end of this video. Okay, now let's do this. Let's dig deeper into this notion, this concept of volatility smile and let's take a look at this concept visually. For this purpose, let's 
make a plot of sigma implied versus k. Sigma implied plotted on the y-axis, k the strike plotted on the x-axis. If I were to look at my x-axis, it's kind of divided into three regions which I need to understand. If my spot price is this S, then this point basically is the point where K is equal to S. Therefore, this point should be associated with an at the money option. This region, which is towards the left of this point, is all those strikes which are less than S. Therefore, this region is associated with out of the money puts or let's say in the money calls. This region where K is greater than S is a region which we associate with out of the money calls or let's say in the money puts. Okay, three regions. One, two, three. Now, typically speaking, in the market, what you observe is one of these two possible patterns or behaviors. This pattern, which looks like a smile, is also named as volatility smile. Verbally speaking, in this pattern, what's happening is that the implied volatilities for out-of-the-money put options, they come out to be higher or greater than the implied volatility for an at-the-money option, which is this point. Also, in this pattern, the implied volatilities for out-of-the-money call options, they also come out to be greater than the implied volatility for an at-the-money option. Okay, so in this pattern, if we were to move from this point either to the left or to the right, the implied volatility increases. Okay, this pattern is referred to as a downward sloping skew pattern. In this pattern, verbally speaking, I can say this, that as I move from out of the money puts all the way to out of the money calls, or let's say in the money puts, the implied volatility progressively keeps decreasing. Okay, now let's do this. Let's spend a minute to try and understand in very simple terms, what's the reason behind these patterns. And specifically, to begin with, let's focus on the downward sloping skew. Now, we know this, that in the Black-Scholes model, if I were to bump up sigma, it increases the premium of my option, both in the case of European call as well as European put. Therefore, there is this positive relationship between premium and the volatility input. Now, if I were to focus on this pattern and specifically talk about, let's say, the equity options market, then in this market, we have lots of institutional investors who have huge exposures on single stocks and also, let's say, on the overall index. These investors, they are facing this downside risk that there might be a drastic drop in the prices of individual equities and the overall index. Now, to hedge against this downside risk, these market participants, they would find it worthwhile to enter into positions in out-of-the-money put options. Okay, And it's this fear of drastic drops in individual equities and the overall index which makes these market participants bid up the prices of these out-of-the-money puts. If I were to come back to this equation, if the right-hand side of this equation were to be pushed up to match this market price, the model will have to push up the sigma input. Right? The positive relationship between premium and sigma. Therefore, elevated demand for these options elevates their price. This, because of this reason which we have here, then elevates the implied volatilities of these options as well. 
Okay. Now, if we were to move to this region, which is the region of out of the money calls, if in this market nobody really cares about these options, the demand for these options is kind of depressed. Therefore, the premiums will also be kind of depressed. And to match those lowered premiums, sigma has to be pulled down, which kind of depresses the implied volatilities for these options. Okay. Now, if on the other hand, in the same market, there was this very bullish sentiment that individual equities and the overall index will drastically go up, market participants would want to monetize on this view and a very inexpensive way of doing so is to enter into out of the money call option positions. In that situation, the demand for these options will go up and because the same reason which we applied here, implied volatilities for these options will also get elevated and we will observe this smile type behavior. Okay, now before I stop, let's revisit this aspect of reassessing probabilities of extreme moves. Now when we talk about probabilities, for this purpose we will need probability distributions. Okay, essentially we are talking about the probability distribution of underlying asset of this stock at a future time capital T. Okay, now as far as this Black-Scholes model is concerned, this model assumes that the distribution of S at this future time capital T follows the log normal distribution, right? Now what we can also do is that we can imply a probability distribution for S at this time capital T from the market. For this purpose, what we need is a bunch of option prices of different strikes and all these options should have the same expiry capital T. So we are essentially talking about two probability distributions, one assumed by the Black-Scholes model and one coming from or implied by the market. Now to understand how these two distributions compare, let's take a look at what our implied volatility versus K plot is telling us. Specifically, let's focus on this plot, the downward sloping volatility skew. This kind of a plot, please remember, is associated with an implied probability distribution which has a fat left tail and a slim right tail. And this is fat versus slim compared to the log normal distribution. Okay, so I'm saying that for this situation, this is what you will observe with respect to implied probability distribution and how it compares with the log normal distribution. You can see the left tail is fatter, the right tail is slimmer. Okay, if your sigma implied versus k was this smile type pattern or behavior, in this kind of a plot, what you will observe is that the implied distribution has a, f a fat left tail and also a fat right tail. Okay, now coming back again to this pattern, if I were to ask you how do the probabilities implied by these two distributions compare, if I am talking about the probability of my final S at this time capital T landing to the left of this level. For this probability, you can easily see this, that the probability being read from the implied distribution is coming out to be higher than the probability which is read from the log normal distribution. Okay, so this kind of a pattern tells us that the probability of a huge down move in my underlying asset is greater when assessed by the market compared to when assessed by the Black-Scholes model, right? If I were to ask you, how does the probability between these two distributions compare when the probability is the, is the probability of the event that the final stock price ends up above this level? For this probability, 
because this tail is slimmer. I mean the implied distribution tail is slimmer, the probability read from the implied distribution will be smaller compared to the log normal distribution. Okay, so it's telling me that the probability of a significant up move as assessed by the market is smaller compared to the probability assessed by the Black-Scholes model. Okay, this video was all about understanding this concept of volatility smile and skew.